so the idea is that there are four different moves that you can do anytime you have two strings with two notes on a string. So if we're doing like this, you have you know a pinky and a pointer, a pinky and pointer, then you have a ring pointer, ring pointer, ring pointer, pinky pointer. So on the top two strings, the highest notes are your pinkies. So one of the rolls you can do is between your pinky finger on those two strings. Cool. And then what you always try and do is go back and forth. So you do these and then end somewhere else. Or cool. So back and forth. Yeah, go to a different finger. And then from there the idea is you know, you can also do the lowest notes. So if you have, you know, pinky and pointer, the two lowest notes are your pointer finger. Try that. Or you can end on any of those other notes. Cool? So you go up. Is that cool? Okay. You can also, when you're talking about rolling between the strings, you can do one low note and one high note. So if I do like the one and the, the six there, the pointer and the pinky. So. Cool. All those are just different ending notes. Work that. Cool. So there I'm getting three and six. I'm getting the one on the first string and the six on the second string. Yeah, you can go anywhere. Yeah, cool. Well, just try and do this with one ending note. Keep it really simple. Do the roll and end somewhere. Cool. Just keep it stupid simple. Yeah. So now when you, when you do those same two strings, you can also get a low note on the second string and a high note on the first string. So three on the second and six here. Try that. Cool, or... Cool. So any of those things are melodies that if you're not like consciously thinking about doing two highs, two lows, two crosses, or you're missing some of the melodic possibilities that are on that string. And the most natural thing to do for everybody is to kind of just do that and we want to get away from that. So you're starting to see these scales more like is the biggest thing you can do melodically to get different pitches working together and not sounding like this. Cool. Okay, so it has to be in rhythm for it to sound musical. So if I'm doing this beat, I'm gonna just kinda get that groove here going again. I'm gonna start with a minor one. I'm doing a seventh chord. Four is minor. Okay, so if I got a beat that's going like this. One, two. Duplets are one and two and three. So for each one of those beats, I'm going one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. So... Yeah, so get a, and that, these slower ones are usually really deliberate, like, you know, really deliberate, so that's duplets, yeah, triplets would be, take that beat, the one that you feel yourself, you know, stomping when you tap your foot, and go, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Like 
Okay, so make sure that you have the hard part of this. So remember what we're trying to do is just back and forth. Just cool. Back and forth across two notes. And work on making those triplets. So what happens is when you do a triplet, you do down, up, down, then up, down, up. When you're going back across strings. So you gotta make it go like down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So you're like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's triplets. That's triplets. Dun 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 dun. One two three. 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 One. Put that main beat down and go. One two three. One two three. One two three. So what we're trying to do is just rolls. Nothing but rolls. Just back and forth between two strings and then end on a note. So. That's the whole idea here to practice those specific four moves across the string. And you're going to see this gives you endless phrases that are different than what you're probably doing most of the time. It's so stinking simple. Okay, so triplets were take that beat, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now if I keep that same beat and do fours, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you get something more grooving. So again, cross string rolls. I'm going to do like. Cool? So any two notes, two highs, two lows, one high, one low, or one, high, one low and one high, but as quadruplets. So take that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the whole idea is to get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, back and forth across the strings. Cool. So you gotta get fours there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, get it to, the, to go real smooth and even. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Put it right on the beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool. And remember, you can work your way across any strings, two lows or two highs, or one of each, one high, one low, one, one low, one high. Cool. So that was quadruplets. Now, sextuplets, it's going to be six notes per beat. So you have, and I usually verbalize that um, like duddle it, duddle it, duddle it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So duddle it, duddle it, duddle it. So same thing, rolls. So don't play anything else and try and get it, get a roll going in one, two, three, four, six, one, two, three, four, six, duddle it, 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 It's faster. It's this. Get the idea? It's quick. And remember, the whole idea here is you're trying to take a roll and end on different notes. So if I do this here, learn that roll that you choose, the two highs or two lows or two mixed ones, and and make it end on a note, on all different notes. Cool? Cool? Yeah, that's got to be pushed, man. Now, of course, you can do quadruple or octuplets also. So, you know, little, 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 Cool. We probably won't do too many octuplets, but the sextuplet thing, man, really, definitely. You really want to try and get it on the beat. So look, 
wherever you go, the idea with this, you can just be working in first position. Get to know. You have these, you have these, you have these, you have these, just on the first string. Then here you have the two highs, two lows, a low and a high, and a high and a low. Then two highs, two lows, a low and a high, two lows, you know, uh, two of each. And you don't want it to be just adjacent strings. You can do the fourth string and the second string. So pick a rhythm level when you do this. And do this intentionally. Go, I'm going to go fours here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, we're on the key again. So there I was doing a low note on the second string, third fret, and a high note on the fourth string. Going back and forth and choosing to do quadruplets. Cool. You have all those other notes to land on. So I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool. Is that cool? The idea is to get a really specific rhythm and a really specific choice of two highs, two lows, or you know, one of each, you know, either high or low. Just work on going back and forth rhythmically and end somewhere deliberate, and then do that again and end somewhere else deliberate. If you don't like where you ended, do it again and get a different note until you end on something that you like. Cool? That's the main thing that I think makes these scales sound good. It's so stupid simple, and it's so contrary to everybody's intuitive, you know, decision to go and so all, all the scales end up sounding the same, you know, everybody ends up doing the same thing. If you really work this, so that was, I was going ticka, 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 you know, fours. Always ending on different notes. And try like one high and one low on non adjacent strings. So your pinky and your pointer on the first string high and your third string low. back and forth and then do a different string try triplets that was one two three one two three no there I was doing four three and four string so try and do just this what we're trying to do is just back and forth between highs or lows or mixed that was two high notes on the third and fourth string cool Yeah, and try and get a really strong triplet. So it's dun 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 dun. Cool. Hold on, I couldn't hear that. And just work on ending. So don't do all the other stuff. Try specifically to get rid of doing anything else and just work on this. Don't let your fingers play. Get your, get your intentional thing. Don't let your fingers just move without your brain. The idea is to think about two really specific things. Doing highs, lows, or mixed, and doing their specific rhythm. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to try and you know choose two strings. Maybe a high and a low, maybe a low and a high, two highs, two lows. And I'm going to go, I'm going to do twos here. That was dun 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 dun. Cool. Yeah, don't do that. Go back and forth between two notes. Cool. That was dun 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 dun. And just back and forth between those highs and lows, or you know, mixed or you know, two highs, two lows, or, or mixed high low. Cool. And just work that. You're gonna see. You're gonna get endless melodies that you kind of go. That sounded good. That sounded good. And do, you know, here's quadruplets. Cool. Cool. 
simple to keep in your head and if you do it you're gonna see different things coming out of your hand than if you just go and play the same stuff you've always thought the, the idea is to force yourself to do that one particular thing and that one particular thing is choose a scale do all either two high notes two low notes or one of each choose a rhythm Play that rhythm and end on a note. Play that rhythm, end on a different note. Play that rhythm, end on a different note. Or do it backwards. Choose a note, play that, that cross string thing. Choose a note, play that rhythm. Cool? And you'll get different licks. Now when you do the, when you do the note and then you do the cross string thing, you, could, you have two ending notes. And the idea is to, to really open your mind up and listen. Open your ears up and listen to what comes out of all those different moves. 
all of those moves are, are different melodies. Every single one of them is a different melody. It's a different set of notes. And here's the math. You got four notes that you can work on for each pair of strings, right? So you have five pairs of strings that are adjacent, but then you have four pairs of strings that have a string in between. So you got nine, and then you have three pairs of strings that have two in between. So you start to get <clears throat> about a dozen like um, pairs of strings times four, so that's about 48 cross string licks. But you can end each of those cross string back and forth things, so about 48 of them, you can end those with um, 12 different notes. So you get 48 times 12, which is like, what, 500 and something, right? 512, something like that, right? So you get 512 discrete different moves just in the first position. And that's legit different melodies, different pitches going back and forth and ending in different places to make up. That's not even a phrase. I mean, we're, we're treating that as a little tiny phrase. But what you do is you, you, know, you, you put those together with other things. You, know, you, you, you do that and you do a bend, or you do that and you do another one of these cross-string things. But it doesn't end there because when you're really thinking about this, we're working specifically on doing the beat, doing duplets, triplets, quadruplets, sextuplets, octuplets. You can do quintuplets, you can do septuplets, you can do, you break the beat up into however many you want. But every one of those, say we have six times that five, now you've got, you know, you, you've got now, uh, what is that? That's, you know, over 3,000 legit different licks. But it doesn't really end there because, and we're just talking about the first position. This is real. I mean, you have literally 6,000 little fragments of things that you can do when you combine doing just the cross-string things with different notes in different rhythms. That's 6,000 different things that you can do. More than that. It's 6,000 change. Um, but, you know, what you're going to do is combine this and do something different afterwards. So if you take those 6,000 times 6,000, then you're really working more with like, you know, 36 million things that you can do just by combining them in two different orders. And, you know, if you start combining that with all the things you can do with bends, then you're into like billions and billions of variations just in the first position. And that's legit. And it's not really even as legit as it gets. What is legit is that you're going to be not just playing like straight eighth notes or straight quadruplets or straight triplets or straight, straight you know, quintuplets. What you're going to be doing is sort of mixing it up a lot. You know, you're going to do a little bit of a fast run and a little bit of ace and, you know, kind of like you can do one little thing. That was the same move where I did, you know, just duplets and I did quadruplets. You know, or... You know, that's a different melody. So the way that you can mix those rhythms together makes it, I mean, really, truly, infinitely different. And those things are genuinely different. But the way to practice it is to do it really methodically and really, you know, in a way that makes you listen so that you're hearing all those different moves and you're doing it intentionally, not just sitting down trying to come up with something cool. You're, you're not going to get that, you know that new spark of creativity by just sort of trying to do something different, what's going to happen is, you, you know, you're going to do all these, you couldn't practice those 6,000 licks. You know, you do that, you know, try and do 20 licks a day, and maybe if you did that 300, you know, you did 20 licks in all the ways you could, and you, and you do that 300 days a year, then maybe you get to 6,000. But it would take you a year of doing that, like, every day, 20 of those a day, to even get through them. So, what we're trying to do is work out the fingerings and, and more than anything, work out this mental model of when I sit down, I'm going to do rolls. And dude, I, I think at the core of what I know as a guitarist, and the core of what I rely on to be good sounding, it's that I'm doing this more than anything. This is what I know gives me like endless variety in my playing that I'm working on doing string skipping, going back and forth, and that, I'm, and that I'm, you know, doing it with a methodic kind of approach. So wherever I go, I'm picking a couple notes, I know I'm going to do some back and forth stuff, I know I'm going to go across strings, I'm going to end somewhere to end a phrase. And I might mix that with a bend and a roll, but the real work of getting to know these scales is really getting those cross string things and getting them in rhythm. You know, really working on the rhythms. So you have real specific, like, you know, practiced rhythmic things. And when you go to play, 
you're just spitting those that that out. You know, you just kind of and and it's really free. You know, you can go. You 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 have to make the the choice to choose a set of strings. You have to choose whether or not you're going to do highs or lows or you know one of each, and you have to choose the rhythm you're going to play, and you have to do that in real time when you're doing this live. You have to do it so you choose what you're going to do, and then you execute that. And so it's intentional. It's it's not like you just happen to come up with that. And I, I think you know I've been doing this for so many years that, that for me, what happens is that all these things I do intentionally, whether it's rolls or bends or you know sequences or pedal tones, um, it, it's it's almost like the choices that I'm making are part of a habitual response of doing this. Having practiced so many of these things, they're going to sound boring when you just do this. They're, you know, I mean, they shouldn't sound boring, but it's going to feel real mechanical, you know? Where this gets good is where you can say, okay, look, I'm going to do the first and second string low notes I'm gonna, as, as, you know, quadruplets. I'm going to do the second, second and third string notes high, and I'm going to do this as eighths, you know, as duplets, and then I'm going to do the fourth and third strings, one high and one low, and they're going to end somewhere. And you pull that off. So I just said, like, you know, the top two strings, quadruplets. There, that's what I just said. I went quadruplets on the first and second low, duplets on the second and third string high, and then cross string um, on triplets on the third and, third and fourth string, and then I ended somewhere. And, you know, I do that every time with, with that kind of intention. My whole thought process is a, is a habitual routine of doing that, of picking something and executing it. And, you know, the more you work out what you can actually do without having to think about it, the more you can just choose to do something and execute it, like do do six tuplets and hit it, you know, on the fifth and fourth strings with a low and a high, the more able you are just to pull off that, that thing that you intend to do. And, and uh, the more willing you are to try it, and the more willing you are to move this stuff around, because you're not relying on some licks that you learned or some moves that you practice a bunch. It's doing this whole thing, getting this whole approach. And I think at the core of all of these things, of all these kind of core things you can do, the cross-string stuff is absolutely the most important. It's what is going to make for melodies. Um, and you just got to do it. There's not much more I can say about it. Or we're actually going to run out of time, but um, I'm going to stop the recording there. Is that You think that's enough of an example?